Hey everybody, it's the King of Misfits. How's everybody doing? Separate church and state. That's what some lawyer said. I think we should remove him from his head. Bam, 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 bam. Separation of church and state, it's a real thing. It's the thing that you hear all the time whenever whenever anybody wants to uh, invoke their religious convictions. There's a whole squadron of fools and degenerates that come out and they say, keep church separated from the state. Separation of church and state for the founders one day on. So the founding fathers said the Declaration of Independence. Oh, what about all the other uh, declarations that are part of that independence scroll? Right? You don't really seem to care about that when it's not convenient for your plight, do ya? No, you don't. Why? Why? Because the guy, the guy, the guy. Because you're a bunch of hypocrites. That's what you are, you're hypocrites. Separate church and state. What is all this business, all this talk about separation of church and state? And why is it so darn important? Right? You would think, you know, by the way that they talked as if back in the Stone Ages at some point in time, there was this thing called church state or state church right this super state that combined both church and state to create an unholy fashy alliance a stronghold for neo-nazism in a pre-nazi world so to speak but it was the baby steps the dress rehearsal for what would be to come you know all the Hitlers that came after. No, separation of church and state has always been a thing. It's always been present. It's always been around. It's been around since the Bible, in fact. No, oh, wait, what? What? Yeah, it's been around since the Bible. That's, that's how uh, things were run in ancient Israel. Before that, it was a theocracy. Okay, you didn't have a ruling priest class. You didn't have a ruling kingship. Okay, you had a theocracy, meaning every man and woman was by obligation of law and uh, obedience to God by virtue of those laws and those morals, principles, justices, commandments, because of all that, man was to govern himself based around those laws. Because there are absolutes, and there were absolutes. God's laws were the absolute laws. So every man knew the law. You had a, you did have a priest that offered sacrifices for atonement, right, for forgiveness and different things like that. You had the scapegoat, right, and the sacrificial goat. All that stuff, all was there. But man governed himself based on the laws that were given to Moses on Mount Sinai. And the priest, well, his job, his duty was to serve in the tabernacle of the Lord and administer the word of the Lord to the people. Okay? They're mediary, so to speak. 
But after the children of Israel wanted to be like all the other nations, they went to Samuel and, you know, hounded Samuel that, Samuel, you're getting old and you're going to die. And we need a king. We want a king because your, your sons are not, your son's not like you. And we can't. We can't have that, Samuel. We need you. If we're not going to have you, then we need you to make us a king. Get us a king, will you? And Samuel's like, get behind me, you bunch of Satans. What do you want a king for? So he can oppress you? So he can rule over you? So he can steal your daughters and use them for his pleasures? for his As his personal chefs and maids? So he can take your sons and put them in his military and and use them for sport and so on and so forth so that he can garner your wages and ask for your worship and adornment all the so on and so forth like all the other nations do and they say yes but we want a king so they can go before us and fight for us be a king like those other nations around us that God has been destroying from before us <laughs> right we want to be like the people that God saved us out of So, anyways, God said, listen, don't worry, Samuel. They don't reject you. It's not you that they're rejecting. It's me. Okay? They're not rejecting you, Samuel. I mean, they are, so to speak, but it's not because they don't want to listen to you. If they could, they'd have you around all the time. It's because you're not going to be around very long, and your son's not like you. They don't trust him. So they want you to make them a king. It's not because they don't like you, Samuel. It's because they don't trust me and the system that I laid out for them. The system of the judges that had all the checks and balances to truly operate a free society, right? Because as soon as as soon as they got king, the kingship, right? It's exactly what happened and all throughout history. Because what do you have? You have two means of Authority. You have the spiritual authority and you have the governmental authority. Okay, the religious authority and the king. Okay? So, the priest was never to do carry out the roles and the functions of a king, right? It was never, um, it wasn't his job to dole out justice okay and prosecute the law that's the government see the government was strictly okay someone broke the law okay the priest it goes beyond the priest now maybe to the delivering or the uh, atonement for the sin but when it comes to actual justice being carried out the king and his men, his cabinet, they take care of that side of things. The law, as far as how the laws of the land are concerned, that is up to the king and his court to administer. The priest, the priest's job is to make sure that people have a line to God. To care for the spiritual welfare and well-being of the people. To be sure that that stuff was being kept up with. Okay? So that's what kept things at check. But throughout the years and throughout the ages, you would have a religious class, a priest class that would often rival the king, right? Because um, in order for the king to rule properly, he had to be in God's good favor. In order to be in God's good favor, so to speak, you'd have to be in the favor of the priest, not his own personal favor, but because God, the priest is God's emissary. Likewise, if the king is to have the people listen to him, he has to be a godly king. If he's not being a godly king and the priest is not um, vouching for him, then he's not going to be very successful. Likewise, if the priest is, um, you know, um, 
self-interested and is focused on things other than the spiritual welfare of the nation, then the king is not going to listen to the priest or the priest or he's going to do things that he sees fit to do. Okay? He's not going to sit there and listen to some priest that never tells him anything good. I mean, if a priest is always coming along and telling him, you're a bad guy, you're a bad king, you're ungodly, well then if the king is being ungodly, well then he'll get upset. If he is a godly king, then he'll also be upset because he wants to do what is right. But the two have to work together. The king can have no control without the bishop, and the bishop, well... He doesn't have to have any control if the king decides that he wants to change out um, religions. Say he wants to kick out the priest, the priest of God, in uh, exchange for a priest of Baal. Right? And then you get another, another situation. And that's happened all throughout history. And then further, you can divide into um, Catholic and Protestant kings, Catholic and Protestant religions, and the ears of the kings and the future kings that they would have, and all the um, wars between success, uh, successing households, factions, families, right? A lot of stuff came into play, but that would be your separation of church and state. The two of them being separate, working together. Okay? One needs the other. What you have today is the opposite of two separate entities working together to do the same thing. Now you have one entity, which is the super state, big daddy, God, government. Okay, the government left off of doing justice in order in order for uh, social justice, and it got into also because it got into social justice the business of religion and spiritual welfare, so to speak. By doing this, all right, they had to they decoupled from religion but declared their own religion. And now we see so many years later of the this, of this separation of church and state crowd that doesn't want anything to do with church or God in government now wants to, do every, wants to have everything to do with your spiritual well-being and wants to administer social justice, okay? And wants you to live with a religious fervor towards your government. That's where you get fanatical. That's where you get fundamental. When you have what you had today between either communism and fascism, the super states, where you have a dictatorship with a collective that's following suit with a religion that corresponds with that state. Okay? So, separation of church and state is bullshit. We are living in a coupled church and state. 100%. That is all.